Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Today, I'm thinking about those moments on battlefields, whether they be large battles or small battles, those moments when a shift happened, a momentous shift in the tide of battle, or a small shift that imperiled the lives of Union and Confederate soldiers. I'm sure if you've read about the Civil War, read about the individual engagement, engagements, you have discovered these moments in time where in the snap of a finger, the conditions on the ground change. A smoke-filled smoke -filled moment in time reveals the enemy troops right in front of you. Or the miscommunication, the misdelivery of an order, the lack of delivery of an order, some moment in time changes the conditions. And all of a sudden, where the blue was in command of the battlefield, now the gray is in command. Or where the gray held commanding ground, all of a sudden the blue is overwhelming the gray. On and on and on it goes. I was reminded of that this morning as I was looking at the information for the individual picture here. His name is Born Spooner. He's the grandson of a rope maker in Massachusetts. That rope maker was also his namesake, the grandfather, on a trip to New Orleans when he was a young man. He saw the horrors of slavery, came back to Massachusetts, and became an abolitionist. The rope maker's son, the rope maker's grandson, picture here, uh, were both followers of the grandfather's abolitionist spirit. So it's no surprise when the war began that Born Spooner, young Born, joined the army and he became part of the ranks of the 13th Massachusetts Infantry. A hard fighting regiment saw lots of action. Born became uh, an unwitting player, if you will, or really circumstances beyond his control. He and his regiment found themselves at Gettysburg on the first day in the chaos and confusion as the Confederate Army moved in on that first day. As the battle unfolded, confusion in the ranks, confusion due to the battle smoke, confusion due to the rapidly changing events on the ground. Thanks to his memoirs, <clears throat> excuse me, um, his memoirs are particularly well done and they are provided to me by Brad Forbish, who is a historian. He runs the website 13thmass.org. And um, in these unpublished manuscripts, we get firsthand young Bourne's experience of what happened to him on July 1st, 1863. And here it is. I'm going to read it to you now. Quote, while I thus standing cogitating with my gun in my hand, I heard a voice behind me yell out, throw down that gun. <clears throat> Supposing, of course, that it was one of our own troops, inasmuch as none of the enemy had passed me, I took no heed of the command, feeling rather vexed that the individual calling to me could not tell from my suit of blue that I was a unionist as well as himself. Seeing that I did not obey, he called out again, louder than before, throw down that gun. I thought now I would turn to see who it was who was so determined upon my disarmament. I then saw, to my astonishment, that the embankment I had lately abandoned was occupied by a line of rebel skirmishers marching in Indian file, and it was one of the number, possibly the foremost one, who was yelling to me. Just as I turned around, he yelled again with more emphasis than before, damn you, ain't you going to throw down that gun? At the same time, bringing his piece to the shoulder to enforce his command with powder and shot. Of course, I dropped the gun then as if I had been a hot potato, but everything was so sudden that I felt no fear, and I stood squarely facing him and awaited the result. I could see by the shortened barrel that the piece was aimed towards me, and an instant later, there came a flash and a report, and almost simultaneously with these, the bullet struck the ground 
close to my right foot, throwing up a piece of sod. I was now a prisoner. Wow, what a passage. What interesting recall, what interesting memory shared by Born Spooner of the 13th Massachusetts. His experience in some ways is not uncommon being captured before you actually know what's going on. And his reaction, his honest reaction of disbelief, shock, in the moment, not maybe fully appreciating what was happening, but when he saw the barrel of a gun and a man yelling at him, he knew instantly what was going on. Still, his mind and body couldn't quite react, and he just stands there uh, with a man in front of him pointing a gun right at him. So the story of Gettysburg, the story of Born Spooner's Gettysburg experience ends here. He becomes a prisoner of war and is marched off. He survives his imprisonment. He survives the war. He grows up, becomes a newspaper reporter and a publisher, and he lives a relatively long life uh, until 1895. But this memory of Gettysburg and other adventures that he had during his time in the Union Army are part of this unpublished memoirs. I'm hoping someday, working with Brad, to be able to publish the full memoirs to give you a better sense of the experience of the common soldier in the ranks of a regiment during the war. But the next episode tomorrow will come before those memoirs are published. So we'll see you then on the next episode of The Trail. Take care.